Hi, I'm Drew, and you're watching Scam Series, and I'm here today to tell you about Coney 2012 and Jason Russell. Coney 2012. Joseph Coney. It's Coney. Coney 2012. Joseph Coney. Joseph Coney. I'm a freedom fighter who is fighting for freedom in Uganda. Mm. It all started in 2004. Three filmmakers, Jason Russell, Laren Pohl, and Bobby Bailey, were seeking to tell the truth behind the Lord's Resistance Army, the LRA, a heterodox Christian rebel group located in what they believed was Uganda. More importantly, Jason Russell, who became the organization's public face, emphasized the capture of Joseph Kony. The foundation sought to raise awareness about Kony, the LRA, and bring attention to the violent crimes and horrors committed in Uganda which include child soldiering, destruction of communities and wildlife, abduction, abuse, and murder. They have abducted over 67,000 youths, 30,000 of which are children who become soldiers or sex slaves. When the LRA abducts the children, they force the kids to shoot and kill their families. The aim of the campaign of Kony 2012 was to highlight these invisible children and violence in Central Africa. After spending some time in Uganda and gathering the necessary parts for the project, Invisible Children released the infamous Kony 2012 video on March 5th of 2012. Kony 2012 was a film created by Invisible Children and directed by Russell himself. The video gained 100 million views in just six days and 3.7 million people pledged to call for the arrest of Joseph Kony. It was the fastest growing viral video in its time the world needed to come together to stop Kony. They wanted to make him famous so that people felt inclined to take action against him. As a result of the film's viral success, Invisible Children raised 28 million in the year 2012. Invisible Children's campaign included an early warning radio network and crisis map to help warn civilians. Invisible Children also sewed Kony kits. These $30 kits included posters, pins, stickers, a t-shirt, and a bracelet to keep Kony in the public eye and make him famous. In an attempt to bring the problem from our computers onto the streets, Invisible Children created a campaign called Cover the Night, where they encouraged people to put up posters and yard signs and create magazine inserts, display murals, and more. Anything people could do that would draw attention to Kony. Their goal was to blanket cities with pictures of Kony to pressure officials into taking action against him, which didn't really happen. The Cover the Night campaign failed. People are willing to watch a video, but that does not mean much when it does not translate into real world actions. Jason Russell and Invisible Children were criticized for oversimplifying the conflict. In the film, Russell is able to explain the entire conflict to his toddler in just a few sentences. What do I do for a job? I will stop the bad guys from being me. He makes it seem like if they were to stop Kony, the children would be safe, ignoring the rest of the LRA. This is the, this is the guy, Joseph Kony. He's the bad guy? They present a black and white version of the problem and do not encourage people to learn more about the situation. But what was Invisible Children actually doing to stop him? And how were the public's donations being used? The problem with the foundation and cause were that there was little to no transparency about funding and spending. Jason Russell, Ben Kesey, Board of Invisible Children, oversimplified the complexities of the issue while also giving false information on Coney's whereabouts and the LRA's numbers. Social media allowed the foundation to gain popularity quickly, giving them a platform. A lot of the money went into funding new films instead of direct donations to Uganda. It felt like they were focusing too much on making more films rather than finding practical solutions to the problem. People in Uganda and other countries that were affected by Kony's brutality resented the video's presentation of young white Americans banding together to save Africans. Invisible Children was also giving false information about Kony's whereabouts. At the time, Kony's location was unknown, and some reports say that Kony had already died when the video was released. An article that was published in 2014 stated that it had been two years since the campaign and Kony was still free. The hype of Kony 2012 wore off and donations to Invisible Children dropped, causing the organization to shut down operations. Invisible Children's communications director, Noel West, said, 
It's easier for people to decide to sit on the sidelines rather than participate. Their campaign relied on participation from bystanders. When their short-term social media hype failed, so did Invisible Children. I'm Drew. Thanks for watching.